It's here in Bastrop County, Texas, where Stacy Stites murder set off a bizarre chain of events that mysteriously ended with two more people dead, one man on death row, and countless questions unanswered. Murder deep in the lost pines of Texas. The half-dressed body of a woman. Strangled. Who killed Stacy Stites? Based on the evidence, who do you think is responsible for your sister's murder? Rodney, Rodney Reed. Reed. The state says Rodney Reed raped and then killed Stacy. A jury agreed, convicting him of her murder. Reed was sentenced to death. Do you think Rodney Reed was given a fair trial? Yes or no? Yes. Yes, definitely. But many across the country are beginning to wonder, did Texas convict the wrong man? Stacy's sisters, Deborah and Crystal, exclusively tell Crime Watch Daily they are convinced of his guilt. He should be on death row. Yes. Absolutely. He should be executed. Yes, yes, he should. Without a doubt. No, no, doubt. no doubt whatsoever. He is guilty. Stacy was a beautiful 19-year-old just starting out. She was very athletic, involved in lots of activities, ROTC. She was well-liked and bubbly, lots of fun, loved the little kids. She was a good person. She worked in the produce section of the local supermarket in Bastrop County, some 30 miles south of Austin, and she lived with her fiancé, a police officer named Jimmy Finnell. She was very, very excited about getting married. She really loved Jimmy. They were... They were two young yeah. kids in love. I was the maid of honor in the wedding. The last uh, call that I had with her, she called to tell me that she had made appointments for our hair and our nails to be done. Finnell told investigators he was asleep when Stacy got into his red pickup truck and left for work around three o'clock in the morning. She had taken that job to work the morning shift because you got paid just a little bit more to work that early shift, so that would help pay for the wedding. When Stacy didn't show for her shift, cops triggered a massive search. We knew it wasn't like her not to show up for work. She was very, very responsible. So when she went missing, we knew she was missing, but we didn't know that she was murdered. Nearly 12 hours after Jimmy says Stacy left home, her body is found alongside this country road. Her family is left devastated. Absolutely. It was unbelievable. She was well liked. Nobody would have wanted to hurt her. Who took it the hardest in the family? Definitely my mom. Our mom. When she found out, she just sat in a chair rocking back and forth saying, my baby, my baby, my baby. Yeah, she was a wreck. God, I did good for a while. <laughs> This is the actual crime scene video shot by investigators moments after the gruesome discovery. You can clearly see ligature marks on Stacy's throat. There are two cans of beer and about 10 feet away, half of a belt. The belt cops believe was used to strangle her. Strangely, the other half was found several miles away alongside Jimmy's truck. The truck he says Stacy drove to work. That truck was found here at Bastrop High School. Shortly after Stacy's murder, Fennell sold the truck. Before Jimmy sold the truck, cops dusted it for fingerprints. The only prints detectives found belonged to Stacy and Jimmy. He's now the first person put under the police microscope. And we wholeheartedly believe Jimmy Fennell did not kill my sister. Cops quickly eliminated Jimmy because they claim he didn't fit into their murder timeline. During the autopsy, the Travis County coroner found something sinister and suspicious. Male DNA inside Stacy's body, and it wasn't Jimmy's. When the autopsy was completed, Deborah and Crystal made arrangements to bury their sister. Seeing her in the casket, Jimmy put the ring on her finger in the casket. Yeah. But in this small town outside the big city, several months pass and Stacy's murder case goes cold. Not knowing who had murdered her was very hard. Yeah. Six months of, of not, of not of knowing thinking, anything. Or almost a year of thinking, this is a cold case, they're never gonna find her, they're never gonna find out who did this. 
Then an unexpected break. Police investigate a sexual assault near the high school where Jimmy's truck was parked. The woman picks out her alleged attacker from a photo lineup. It was Rodney Reed. He was well known to authorities. The state claims Rodney had a history of sexual violence, including the rape of a 12-year-old girl. He was never convicted in those cases. Then investigators make a stunning discovery. Rodney's DNA matches the DNA found inside Stacy's body. He was charged with aggravated sexual assault and capital murder. At first, Rodney denied knowing Stacy, but as the evidence unfolded, his story changed. He claims he and Stacy were in a secret relationship. The relationship was somewhat discreet, you know what I'm saying? We was sneaking around, you know, but uh, and she, she was just a, she was a fun person. She was a really fun person. At the time, do you remember if you, like, saw a future with her or? No, no, we wasn't looking at, we wasn't looking at life like that. You know what I'm saying? We were doing what we were doing. At the time, I was 27, she was 18, turning 19, I was turning 28, you know. But that alleged love affair was news to Stacy's sisters. Had you ever met Rodney Reed at any point before Stacy's death? And if so, how did you see him or meet him? We had never heard of Rodney Reed. Nope. Not at all? Nope, never. Never in the picture, that, as far as your knowledge? Absolutely not. The only time we had ever heard of Rodney Reed was when he became a suspect in the murder. Rodney pleaded not guilty and stood trial. Based primarily on the DNA evidence, the jury convicted him of capital murder. He sentenced to death. Sounds like case closed, right? Not quite. This story is about to take more dramatic twists and turns than the winding roads in South Texas. Convicted killer Rodney Reed spends 23 hours a day locked in a 60-square-foot cell. His address, Death Row, Texas. I have to maintain my faith and my hope, you know what I'm saying? You know, a lot of the young people out there, it would give me a lot of hope and support. Like many inmates, Rodney claims he's innocent of murder, and he says he's got a good reason his DNA was found inside the body of Stacy Stites. He claims they were having a secret sexual relationship. Have you ever reached out to her family? Because you know that they are very critical of you and, and believe that you are guilty. Well, her mom and her two sisters, you know what I'm saying? I just, I just hate the fact that they've been misled, just like the jury was. You know, this, the state has misled them. But today, many are questioning his conviction and asking, is the wrong man on death row? Recently surfaced evidence could point to another killer. Our Austin affiliate KXAN has extensively investigated the conflicting evidence in the case. Either you believe Rodney Reed or you don't. And that's really what this case comes down to. Shannon Wolfson is one of the few journalists ever to interview Rodney in prison. And if you haven't been to death row in Texas, that is um, a memorable experience. I mean, it is something that you don't forget. You uh, wait for a door to open, uh, you walk into a room, that door closes, you wait for another door to open, uh, that door closes. It is a very controlled environment. You do not touch the inmate, you're separated by a wall. If you did not kill Stacy, who do you think did? The evidence points to one person. The time frame with these doctors come up with points to one person. And when one cop focused on that person Rodney is talking about, death greeted the officer at the door. Less than six months after Stacy Stites was murdered, the officer who was investigating her death was also murdered here. Giddings, Texas officer Joe Bryant was conducting an unauthorized investigation into Stacy's killing when he was gunned down by a migrant worker from Mexico. Joe's widow, Maria, says before his murder, Joe revealed the identity of who he thought was the killer. He said Jimmy Fennell killed Stacy Sites. Jimmy Fennell, Stacy's fiance, also a police officer. With what conviction did he have in his confidence of who killed Stacy? When he said it, I wasn't surprised. 
And almost unbelievably, a second police officer involved died under mysterious circumstances. Ed Salmella was one of the first cops on the scene of the crime. Nearly four months later, he was dead from what the coroner called a self-inflicted gunshot wound. But his brother Scott says he doesn't buy it. And you did your own investigation. What did you find when you went to his apartment? When I went to my brother's apartment, my brother was pretty immaculate guy, he kept things in, in their place. His apartment was in disarray, everything, sheets ripped off the bed, all his guns were gone, his computer, hard drives, all of that were gone. He was shot with his left hand in the left side of the temple and it took off the right half of his ear. But the gun itself was found laying next to his right foot. My brother was right-handed. He shook with his left hand. I mean, he, he, his left hand would shake. So he, he always used a gun in his right hand. It doesn't make sense. Texas Assistant Attorney General Lisa Tanner prosecuted the case against Rodney. She says there's no connection between the two officers' deaths and Stacy Stites. Do you think that the officers' deaths have anything to do with Stacy Stites' murder? No. Ed Samella killed himself over his girlfriend. There was a note, um, and it was ruled a suicide. Joe Bryant. He was with Gideon's police. He was not part of the investigating agency in this case. He apparently sort of went off and did his own little investigation. Two reasons many are now looking at Fennell. In court documents, Rodney's attorney claims Fennell told another cop, quote, if he ever discovered Stites cheating on him, he would strangle her and he would use a belt. Also, it turns out detectives never searched the apartment Fennell shared with Stacy. Why was the apartment that Jimmy Fennell and Stacy Stites shared never searched when that was the last place her mother saw her alive? There's always something that doesn't get done and searching her apartment was that thing here. Um, I wish they would have searched her apartment. I think in hindsight, they wish they would have searched the apartment. Remember, Fennell was cleared as a suspect and never charged in connection with Stacy's murder. Jimmy couldn't have done it um, based on all of the extrinsic evidence, not just the medical examiner, but the forensics along with where Stacy was, the condition of her body, where Jimmy was. The reason why Jimmy was eliminated as a suspect is because he, he couldn't have gotten where he got um, with the transportation that he had. It just wasn't humanly possible. Why? Prosecutors say it was impossible and unlikely. They argue Stacy was killed between 3 and 6 in the morning while Jimmy was sleeping at home. Investigators say he couldn't have driven the body to the field, dumped the truck at the high school, and then, without any transportation, walked some 30 miles on country roads in the middle of the night back to his apartment. The state says it's clear Fennell is no killer, but he's no Boy Scout either. He took his gun out. He placed it against my head. And he pulled my pants down. Connie Lear says Fennell sexually assaulted her. She says it happened when he gave her a ride to a hotel after she and her boyfriend got into an argument. She's bravely coming forward to tell her story. He just kept telling me to shut up. He asked me to dance for him. And I told him no. And when I told him no, he got mad and he grabbed me and slammed me up against the back of his car where the trunk is. I kept telling him to stop, but he just told me to shut up, that I knew I liked it. He handed me one of his cards and told me that his kid had a soccer game the next day, and when he got done, he wanted to see me again, and then if I told anybody that he'd hunt me down when he got out of prison and kill me. Well, Connie told, and prosecutors believed her. Fennell copped a plea deal, guilty to kidnapping and improper sexual activity with a person in custody. He was sentenced to 10 years in state prison. I think when that happened, uh, obviously the focus shifted a little bit back to Jimmy Fennell. People thought, wow, if he's capable of doing that, was he capable of murdering Stacy? We contacted Fennell in prison for a comment, but he isn't talking. So why are Rodney's attorneys now floating this theory that Fennell killed Stacy? In court papers, they claim new evidence actually clears Rodney. Three forensic scientists have looked at the evidence against Reed, and all three of them say the same thing. Rodney Reed is not a killer.
In the court documents filed by Rodney's attorneys, the pathologists claim his guilt is medically and scientifically impossible if she really was killed between 3 and 6 a.m. Look closely at the crime scene video taken 15 hours after Fennell says Stacy left their apartment. Retired NYPD detective and noted forensics expert Kevin Gannon says Stacy's body appears to be in an advanced stage of rigor mortis, which could indicate she died long before the state's case claimed. When the body first uh, is deceased, decomposition starts in the lower right, qu right quadrant and then spreads to the rest of the body. It turns a, a, a blue to a greenish color, which showed me that this young lady was deceased for 24 hours and not the 15 hours now that she was missing. That means that the murder did not take place at, at 3.30 in the morning. It took place probably somewhere about nine to 10 hours earlier. And after further examining the evidence for Crime Watch Daily, Gannon has another remarkable theory. He believes strangulation was not what killed Stacy. Could she have been submerged? Here's a woman is on land, but she has 1,200 grams of fluid in her lungs. And the normal amount of fluid in the lungs for somebody of her size should be like 600 grams, maybe 700. When you have over 1,000, it's pretty much considered a drowning. I think she was strangled to, to restrain her. I think she was drowned. Now, the only question, are theories enough to save Rodney from the needle? Rodney Reed has always maintained his innocence, yet a jury found him guilty of murdering Stacy Stites. Now in a Crime Watch Daily exclusive, we interview one of those jurors who put Rodney on death row, and she says if she'd known then what she knows now, her decision would have been very different. Convicted killer Rodney Reed's date with death is on hold. An appellate court stayed his execution indefinitely, pending a review of new evidence in the murder of Stacy Stites. KXAN investigative reporter David Bearer is intently following the case. What do you think as far as his innocence, guilt, or is it unclear? I can't be sure, but I think that the amount of evidence that the defense team has brought, a lot of people believe it warrants a retrial for Reed. In court papers, Rodney alleges Stacy's own fiance, Jimmy Fennell, might be the killer, even though he was long ago ruled out as a suspect. His attorneys say the existing evidence raises a healthy suspicion that Jimmy Fennell and not Mr. Reed committed the murder. They're still trying to kill me for something I had nothing to do with. But the state of Texas says there is no dispute. Rodney Reed is the killer. How do you respond to people who say that Rodney Reed did not kill Stacy Stites? That they need to read the evidence, read the file, look at the evidence because it speaks for itself and none of the evidence that has developed since trial has led us away from that conclusion that he is guilty of this crime. What about the secret affair? I'm glad you asked about this secret affair, and I'm gonna put it in quote, air quotes, because that's really what it was. She was 18 days away from her wedding. She was obsessed with marrying Jimmy Fennell. This juror voted to send Rodney Reed to death row, but she now says she has regrets. I have questions now about whether Rodney was really guilty. It's a stunning claim you'll see only on Crime Watch Daily. She wonders, did she convict the wrong man? We're hiding her identity for her safety. I voted guilty. I stand by the decision because I made it based on the evidence it was presented and what I knew at the time. Since then, there have been a lot of things that I've learned in that 20 years or heard about that have made me wonder if Rodney was framed. No one is a bigger champion of Rodney's innocence than his brother Roderick, who supports his brother's claim that Rodney was in a consensual sexual relationship with Stacy. Rodney first told me about the relationship. He told me he was seeing this girl and he said he think that might be the one. And he said there was only one hitch. He said she's, you know, engaged to this police officer. Roderick says his brother Rodney told him Fennell threatened him when he found out. Rodney was threatened by Jimmy Fennell, saying that if he continued to see his fiance, that he would kill him. And Rodney is getting support from an unlikely source. I came to a conclusion that was not expected. 
That's Heather Staub, Stacy's first cousin. She claims after she changed her mind about Rodney's guilt, her family cut her off. As far as my aunt and my cousins are concerned, I've been um, kicked out of the family and um, they don't want anything to do with me and how would I feel if what was done to Stacy was done to my daughter and Rodney's a horrible person and just on and on. But Stacy's sisters say Heather is just looking for her 15 minutes of fame. She never even came to the trial. She was never at the trial. We haven't Why seen her. Why is it her so in important to her now? We haven't seen her in many years. And now it's important for her to save Rodney Reed. Saving Rodney Reed is the full time job of his attorney, Bryce Benjay, from the Innocence Project. His convictions and miscarriage of justice. Benjay successfully persuaded the Texas Court of Appeals to issue the stay of execution. We're looking at the video of the crime scene. Remember those beer cans found at the crime scene? Benjay says DNA results from the cans were never introduced in the trial. He says Rodney's DNA was not on them. You had a very exculpatory DNA report that said two police officers and Stacy couldn't be excluded from this beer can. Now subsequent DNA testing of that beer can actually excluded Stacy. Jimmy Fennell was never charged in connection with Stacy's murder. And for now, Rodney remains on death row until the courts sort all this out. But the main question may be impossible to answer. If Rodney didn't kill Stacy, then who did? If you think Rodney Reed is innocent, then you take him home around your family, your daughter, your mother, your sister. If you think he's innocent, be willing to take him home with you.